What will I paint today? What am I in the mood for? Space elves of the spicy variety? Ooh. Nah, nah. Hmm. The smurfiest Ultra Smurfs codex to ever smurf? A contender, but nah. Maybe the tat- no. Ooh, what is this? I think it's about time for a visit from the Inquisition. No one expects the 40k Inquisition. Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Eons of Battle. And recently I have acquired an old Inquisitor model. And the eagle-eyed old Hammer fans among you might have already spotted what makes this model so interesting. The rest of you will just have to stay tuned and find out. Now, I am very familiar with 40k models. It's kind of what I do, and I can usually spot them and usually diagnose them with pretty good accuracy. Boom, third edition Dark Eldar. Wham, second edition Assault Marine. Kapow, Assault on Black Reach Orc War Boss. It's almost a game for me. But when I came across this model, I was wrong. When I saw this model, I thought early 40k Inquisitor and Terminator armor, probably around third edition. So cool model add to cart. But when it showed up on my doorstep and I began researching it, I found out I was wrong. Sort of. This model is an Inquisitor, but it's not no third edition one. It is in fact a Jess Goodwin 1989 Rogue Trader model. It was sold with a second similar Inquisitor in a blister pack. I was over a decade off, but I was not a complete dummy, as this model is not armed with the original weapons. This is in fact a kit bash. So I had lost my old hammer cred, but maybe I can get it back. What are the exact parts used in the creation of this one-of-a-kind model? It was time to look through the sacred texts. I poured through my codexes. I don't have a complete library, but it is pretty close. And as I researched, I was finding that my 40k archives were coming up short. Nothing in the Demon Hunters and Witch Hunters codex was coming up, and it was a similar story with the Grey Knights codex and Space Marines. But I am not one to shy away from a challenge, and after looking through basically every Imperial model ever produced by Games Workshop, I found them. The sword arm is not from the old metal Asmodai, not to be confused with the company that now owns Star Wars Legion. The Asmodai from 40k is a Dark Angels interrogator chaplain in a vintage model in its own right. From 40k's second edition. This took some major searching, there are a lot of metal hands holding power swords. And then for the Stormbolter hand, I was so sure it was a Grey Knight, but the shoulder pads did not match. It's not the Grey Knight's customary text with a book, it's the Crux Terminatus. But by golly, I found it. The Stormbolter is from none other than the third edition Logan Grimnar from the Space Wolves. This model is in fact a kit bashing of three legendary models from 40k's history. Now usually I find that when I purchase models from eBay, let's just say the paint that comes with is usually... adequate? I never feel bad about covering up the previous paint shop, but this model is painted really well, and I don't want to destroy the paint, but I will do what I must. And so I will let this video stand as a testament to its greatness, and in the end we will see if I am able to improve upon it. This model had a whole life before reaching me, converting, kit bashing, and a great paint job, and so I want to now add in my take to continue its story and perhaps one day when it has moved on from me and goes into someone else's collection, it'll continue to improve as it goes on in its life. But now it is time to get to work. I took my Inquisitor out of his bath and placed him on a paint handle. It was time to paint. Ugh, this is why I don't like stripping models. I got off about 98% of the paint, but that last 2%, that last 2% is gonna haunt me. But somehow I'll manage. And on this guy, I'm gonna be trying out a whole bunch of true metallic metal. So here goes. I started off throwing some black primer into my airbrush and spraying this onto the model. Now primer dry is really matte and I wanted a satiny base for my metallic, so I sprayed him with some apple barrel black paint. This gave me the glossiness I wanted to help boost the look of the metallics. And speaking of metallics, I mixed some lead belcher into my black paint and put that into my airbrush. I sprayed this onto the model and it made him a nice dark gunmetal. Then I sprayed again with pure lead belcher. I kept this to the raised edges to do a zenithal thing, but metals are harder to control than standard opaque colors. Well, he is certainly silver. 
But I've run into the same problem that I always run into with true metallic metals. He's just shiny. He's a shiny gunmetal color. I don't have a lot of control over the value. Right now there are values, but they're just created by the general gray color of the paint and the lights around me. But I want to be in control, and so I'm going to try to take that control by treating these true metallic metals as non-metallic metals. Hopefully it works. I gave him a bath of Nuln oil to make the recesses nice and dark. This was a good step one. Then I moved on and took some watery black paint and began forcing on some shadows. Metallics want to shine, so I want to completely remove anything that can shine from the bottoms and recesses of his armor. Then I began stippling my lead belcher back on to make the raised areas brighter. I stippled on a 50-50 mixture of lead belcher and silver paint to push my contrast even further. And then finishing with a selective application of pure silver. This is my brightest bright, but it wasn't doing everything I wanted it to do. So the model now has value, sort of. I've worked it from black all the way up to silver, and it looks all right, but to my eye, it doesn't look amazing because if you compare silver to pure white, silver is like a mid-tone gray. And so to me, the model is lacking value. But on the other hand, to my eye, the reflections of light around me are giving me highlights of white, but they're not really there on the model. It's just glitter. It's just light reflecting off the metallic paint. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix white paint into my silver paint and pop the highlights all the way up to pure white to find out once and for all if that is a terrible idea and I should have left well enough alone. I used this white mixture just like I would any normal highlights, mix it into my paint to brighten it. And it was working, but oddly I was covering up the spots that were physically reflecting light with the equivalent bright white paint, and it was an odd sensation. It was becoming less reflective-y bright while still looking reflective. I think it worked well. I think further testing is in order, but I do think I'm onto something. Now it was time for all the details. I took some green contrast paint and applied this to the laurels on his chest. Then I highlighted these with green paint mixed with more and more yellow until they were nice and bright. On his book, I painted the pages tan and cover brown, then finished off with some washes and highlights. I reused these colors to put onto my purity seals, and I mixed in browns to darken the areas of the paper to make it look like there were wrinkles and folds. I painted the red decorations in Storm Boulder with some dark red, adding in more and more bright red until the raised areas were nicely highlighted. And on his gold parts, I did a similar process as to what I did on the armor, mixing in browns into the golds and highlighting up with yellows and whites to add in contrast. I actually had a really good time painting this guy's decorations, and that is not something I say very often. Usually decorations are the annoying thing that is keeping you from painting the real parts of the model. But something about this model just works. It has a really, really good balance. And I think the next thing to do is his face. Faces are really hard. I started off with a brown base coat. This will end up being my darkest color, and I worked with very thin paint. I don't want to build up paint and lose detail. Then I mixed up a little bit of tan into my brown and began picking out areas to highlight. The easiest places for my brush to reach, like the forehead and cheekbones, will get the most highlights, while his cheeks and smile lines will remain dark. Then I added more tan to my brown and continued applying highlights, covering less and less of the paint I previously put down. This will create gradients between the colors of his face. Now I am working with pure tan, and I am stippling on highlights, looking at them and seeing how I like them, then feathering them out. Working in steps like this gives the face more detail than was originally on the model. I put a dot of tan on the tip of his nose and on the bridge, but left the length dark. And this makes it look like there's more going on, when in reality, his nose is just a little lump of leaded metal. To paint his eyes, I started by base coating with black, and then very, 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 very carefully picking these areas out with white. I had to repeat this process a few times before I got it right. Then, I carefully placed black dots in the whites of his eyes to be his pupils. Whew, I was holding my breath that entire time. That was pretty nerve-wracking. He has a little tiny face. But don't forget that paint is an additive process. You can always keep adding more if you make any mistakes. If you keep your paints thin, you should probably be able to get about 50 layers before the paint gets a little too thick. And you know what else is too thick? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have lots of high-quality terrain STLs available and is the best way to support us making videos. In addition to great grim dark terrain, you will also gain access to one exclusive video a week, some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, a live hobby hangout every week, and more. Another great way to support us is by checking out our merch. You can follow the link in the description below to our shirts and sweatshirts with some fun hobby-related designs. Now with that said, let's paint a sword. I wanted his power sword to glow green, so I started out with a base coat of dark green. 
Then I mixed a little neon green into my dark green and watered it down a lot. Then I applied it to the model, and this gave me very faint patches of color. I continued to go over these areas again and again and again until they were more prominent, and still had a nice gradient between the neon green and the dark green. Then I added more neon green to my paint and continued the same steps again, adding very thin patches of paint. It might feel like no paint is being deposited, but that is what you want to get those creamy blends. If you go too much color too fast, you will have to do a bunch of repair work. Once I had my highlights all the way up to neon green, I mixed a little bit of yellow and continued glazing. Now that the blade was looking powerful, it was time for an edge highlight. I used yellow to outline my sword, and this really made it all come together. He is almost perfect, but there is still one detail missing from my version that was on the original version I got on eBay, and that is the giant pool of blood in front of him on his base. Gotta have that. I also want blood on his sword, so I began by painting black over just the tip. This will help tell the story of where that huge puddle of blood has come from. Then I painted on some red, letting just a little bit of the black paint show through to outline the blood. On the base, I stippled my red in front of him, properly saturating the metal grates and letting just a little bit of blood get into the pipes and wires underneath. Now that the blood was on, I wanted to highlight it, so I took a bright red and applied some highlights. It might not be super realistic, but it will make the blood look more striking. With my blood now glistening, the only thing left to do was to paint the rim of the base black. This model really turned out. There's usually something about old models that sort of forces you to paint them in that old retro style. I definitely found that to be the case with models like my Terminator Chaplin from 3rd edition and my Metal Vinicar Assassin. I didn't mean to paint those in a classic style, but the paint sort of just went on those models in an old school way. But this model, this model turned out really different. It was very surprising. This model came to me already looking great, and I tried to recreate the paint job in my own way. The original had metallic armor, gold details, a red storm bolter, and a glowing green power sword. Let's see how mine compares. This was a really unique challenge. I usually stay away from well-painted models on eBay, as they are often more expensive, but I got this guy for a steal. And the original paint job had given this model a great story. I think my paint job has done justice to this model's history. This model looks really, really good for 30 years old. I like the old models, but I am not blind to their age. They are old and they look it. Hand sculpted models from the so-called good old days have a style that is usually pretty recognizably different from today's perfectly rendered CAD designed minis. But this guy is really riding that line. If I showed this to some gamers, I wonder how many of them would be able to place him as an ultra classic rogue trader mini. I think he stands up well even against modern minis.